what we are looking at here today is Asclepius incarnata. Uh, there's many common names for it. I call it swamp milkweed. Uh, that name, swamp, because it's often found in wet areas, so like floodplains, the sides of riverbanks, um, swampy areas, of course. Uh, but don't let that name swamp deter you. Uh, it actually is happy in a wide range of habitats and moisture levels. And then milkweed, uh, because like all the milkweeds, if you cut into the stem or the leaves, this milky looking uh, liquid comes out. It's a sap, and that sap contains cardiac glycosides, uh, which are actually poisonous to us, to mammals, to many insects. So any organism that can eat the leaves on this thing have a way of handling those cardiac glycosides. Anyways, that white sap that comes out is why we have the name milkweed. So swamp milkweed, Asclepius incarnata. Um, so here are the specs for this plant, just so we can all make sure that we're talking about the same thing. So you can see, again, that uh, soil moisture, wet to medium, and that soil type. I have written clay, loam. I mean, it really handles so many different types of soils. It's in uh, sun conditions as well, full sun, partial sun. It is even shade tolerant. So it's really a nice plant that can get planted in many different areas, right? And so today we're going to look at Asclepius incarnata uh, and see what it looks like an established plant in every season of the year. And so I have three different sites that we're going to be following today. Uh, the first one is a full sun location. Um, and in that full sun location, I just want to say ahead of time, in case I forget to mention it, this plant gets to be about five feet tall in full sun. Uh, there are many blooming stalks from the central stalk. The central stalk is very thick. It's a very robust, full-blooming plant in full sun. In fact, the one you're seeing on screen right now is that full sun location. The partial sun location, it will only get to three or four feet tall. Fewer blooms overall, fewer blooms from that central stalk, and the central stalk is usually thinner, I have found. The third location uh, that I'll show you is a shade location. It gets about half an hour of sun a day, which is considered shady. Um, you'll only see this location once or twice. Um, there, my swamp milkweed only ever gets two to three feet tall maybe. I've never seen a bloom, not even a, um, a bud or anything. And there's only one thin central stalk in this location. As we go along here, I will also discuss uh, what the point might be of having a milkweed even if you don't get any blooms on it. All right, so let's get started. So here we have the partial sun location and we are in mid-spring. For me, that's April and this is when it's starting to come up. You can see that they're about maybe an inch tall here. Um, the, on the top, you can already see little leaves are forming and of course you can also see tiny little central stalks coming up and maybe there's two or three of them there. This is a couple days later, exact same spot, um, and you can see they're already maybe an inch and a half tall. They're, they're a little taller. I do notice when my different milkweeds come up, they do come up pretty quick. We are now looking at the full sun location. So those are the two main sites you'll see. And here it is late spring. Uh, early May and here is what they look like coming up a little more reddish uh, than the partial sun location um, but here they are in this full sun location you're gonna see footage from a couple different years so there will be some variation in how many stocks you see based on the year because of course variability between years So now uh, we are looking at the full sun location. Um, this is a different year, as I said, and here they are coming up uh, in late spring, which is May, and they're not as tall as the footage you just saw. And so that's to say somewhere in mid to late spring, late April, early May for me, is when they come up, uh, and there can be variability on what week that will be. So this is that shady location. Uh, this is the half an hour of sun it gets a day. And this is what they look like late spring or May coming up. 
Um, and so I've got two stalks coming up here. And so shade, partial sun or full sun, mid to late spring, whatever that is for you is when they start coming up. So this is the exact same day as that uh, shady spot. This is our full sun spot and you can see how tall they are now. And at the top you can really see, oh those are leaves for sure, right? And we're already maybe six to nine inches tall in this late spring. And I'm seeing maybe three stalks coming up, maybe four back there. Um, what I've noticed with all of these milkweeds is I'll get like three to five stalks coming out of the ground and only a couple of them though will actually become full-grown stalks. So this is the full sun location a different year. Um, again late spring and there I can see maybe one to three stalks coming up. Uh, I think only one of these stalks will end up doing anything so that's seemingly pretty normal. In the full sun locations I know the stalk as they come up is usually a little more reddish in the partial or shaded sites when that stalk comes up they're a little more greenish. And so this is uh, the same day as the footage you just saw, our partial sunspot, still late spring, uh, right in the middle of May for me. And here they are. So these are maybe already a foot tall um, and looking very green, looking very lovely. Hey, fellas. Here's our full sunspot. Um, and you can see that we've got three stalks two that are taller um, and they might already be a foot and a half to two feet tall and there's a smaller stalk there at the bottom. So this uh, mid to late spring, for me that's late April to May, is when things, I mean these guys pop fast, don't they? Uh, and so this is that full sun location, different year, uh, same day and just a different year. Um, and it looks fewer stalks and a little less tall, right? So this is maybe a foot to a foot and a half tall. So there is variability from year to year, even in an established site, as to exactly when they come up and how many stalks you'll get. Um, again, the full sun site. This is my favorite site, <laughs> the full sun one. Um, and you can see, again, we're getting towards the end of May here for me. And... I mean, our stalks, they're already very strong now, getting very thick. And you can see uh, some of those shorter ones, and then there's the taller ones. So these leaves are lance-shaped. Uh, sometimes they curve inwards a little bit. Relatively smooth is our Asclepius incarnata leaves. So our full sunspot again, the year when only one stalk really came up. So you'll be going back and forth between two years. One year this one stalk came up, in the other year uh, multiple stalks came up. What are you going to do? Okay. So this is somewhere across town. You'll see this site once or twice. Uh, same day though as that last footage and you can see here across town these are maybe just a foot tall. This is a full sun location and they're getting maybe that's four stalks in there coming up. Um, so Asclepius incarnata has sort of a rhizome root. Um, I'll link you to a video below about rhizomes, but there is also a, a, a tap root that comes down from that and then little fibrous roots too. So when you get a little clump like these, you get multiple stalks coming up, often those are from one plant underground, one rhizome root structure that they're all coming up from. So they're technically the same plant. And uh, still late spring, still the full sun site, uh, but really, I mean, in these couple weeks that I am showing you this footage from, they go from an inch uh, tall to two, three feet tall, right? Uh, the milkweeds really come up when they come up. So this is early summer now, June, and I'm noticing on the leaves that they're already getting some holes in them, which is a good sign. That means caterpillars or insects are using it. And look at that. No blooms yet, and you know what that is? That's a monarch caterpillar. 
That's a caterpillar from a monarch butterfly. And I actually discovered that little caterpillar at the exact moment I was taking this uh, film. So you noticed it when I noticed it. Um, so when I see little holes in leaves, uh, I all, many people are like, oh no, I want my plants to look perfect. No, you don't. Caterpillars uh, make our beautiful butterflies and moths, and they need to eat leaves. And so when I see holes in leaves, I think, good, good. There's activity here. Stuff is happening. Um, and they don't eat enough to kill the plant, so it's fine. The Asclepius incarnata, they're used to it. Uh, so we're still early summer, and this is from the year in that full sun location when just one stalk came up. Uh, in this particular year, the leaves were less chewed on. Uh, the leaves looked more, to our eyes, more beautiful. Uh, but I remember being concerned that year. Why, why are these not... Um, as eaten. Where are all of our caterpillars that eat this type of plant? There's not that many caterpillars that can handle that milky cardiac glycoside sap, uh, but there are some, so this guy should be more eaten. So here we are in the partial sun location, early summer, sort of early June for me, uh, and you can see, like I had said, those stalks are a little thinner than the full sun location stalks. But they're still two to three feet tall at this point. Some of the leaves are crinkling in a little bit. Some of them have been um, eaten a little bit by some different insects. So I still have June written there, but it's mid-June now, no longer early June. Um, but still considered early summer. Full sunspot, again, you can see that stalk is thicker than the partial sunspot. And this is that single stalk year, uh, probably three feet tall at this point. And it will, it will get taller yet. At some point here, you're going to start seeing bugs, um, like groupings of bugs. And so those will be aphids, aphids in different stages of their life cycle, and milkweed bugs, milkweed bugs in different stages of their life cycle. I'll show you more as we go through... Um, because there's a lot going on with those insects. But I do want to say a lot of people are like, well, we got to kill the aphids or kill the milkweed bugs. This is terrible. Don't, don't, don't do that. Um, <laughs> they don't kill the plant. Uh, the plant can handle it fine. Um, and if you kill the aphids, what you do essentially is you're not allowing the predators who like to eat aphids, you're not giving them time to come in. So don't kill the aphids. Let them be. Um, the plants have actually, uh, I was reading about all the different defenses that um, Asclepius incarnata has for when aphids start chomping and milkweed bugs start getting involved. Uh, the plant is used to this. It knows what to do. It has, um, it changes uh, many things about its leaves and a lot of internal things going on that we can't notice, but the plant is doing stuff to handle itself and to handle aphids and milkweed bugs, and even monarch caterpillars and moth caterpillars that eat when it is insulted, when the plant is insulted. Um, it does all sorts of things with its hormonal dynamics, its carbon to nitrogen ratio in those leaves, the water content of the leaves. It changes things around so it knows what to do so you don't have to worry about it. So this is the partial sun location, early June, uh, early summer, I'm sorry, it's late June, <laughs> early summer, multiple stalks. Um, you can see they're just getting taller. Some leaves have holes in them, which again, I always take to be a good sign. Um, <clears throat> and here they are. And anyways, if you uh, leave the aphids and the milkweed bugs and everything, um, let them be. Uh, the next year or even the year after, if you let them stay, there are predators that like to eat them will have time to come and find them and then you'll really start getting a nice little habitat a nice little mini ecosystem of predators and prey and everything starts coming in and doing their natural cycles so leave the aphids let the predators come I'll show you that in a little bit you'll get to see some you'll get to see some action so full sunspot early summer look what we got the beginning of our little buds so those little greenish whitish balls are the beginning of our buds so this is, of course, very exciting. So that's the full sun location, single stalk. Um, and this guy is maybe four feet, four and a half feet tall. So this is that full sun location, same day, different year. 
This is the year that we had multiple stocks coming up. Um, and the stocks look good, of course. Leaves coming out as they do, two by two. And then, uh-oh, nipped. Yeah, a deer came along and chomped. So this multiple stock year, I was very excited. And then a deer came and chomped everything off the top. And I thought, you son of a... And so anyways, I'm showing you, though, that this is a few days after it got nipped and little leaf buds are coming up. And that central stalk sends up more buds um, and little stalks to the side. So again, when plants, when our milkweed is insulted, which is to say chomped on, chewed in some way, it responds right away. It's not some, it's not a dullard. It's not an idiot. <laughs> it knows what to do. So it's starting to send up little side leaves and side shoots. So now we're at midsummer, and this is the single stalked full sun milkweed year and you can see those buds are becoming more pinkish now aren't they? So if this was your plant you'd be getting excited. You'd be like it's about to happen and it is about to happen. <laughs> so for me this is early July. Right around the 4th of July my swamp milkweed is getting ready to bloom. And down here, further down the stalk, there's other side stalks that come out that also get little buds and will get little blooms too. So it's not just at the top. There's little side, little side darlings that come out too. But it's all off of, in this case, this one central stalk. And again, from year to year, I get different numbers of stalks that come up, uh, just depending on conditions. Okay, so this is that same day, but it started to rain, and I thought, well, that's lovely. Different environmental conditions, and here's our swamp milkweed, just as happy as she can be no matter what. <laughs> so those little buds start kind of low in the leaves, and as they get closer to blooming, they come up taller. So you can see the most brightly pink ones are a little taller than the more whitish greenish ones which are lower still in there so they kind of come up on little stalks and get taller before boom blooming partial sun exact same day that same rainy day hasn't rained yet um and then in the partial sun spot you can see blooms right or not blooms but buds and those buds are getting um there's not as many buds as in the full sun spot right that tends to just be how it is. And I was also showing you two of those stalks also got nipped by deer. So now we're midsummer. We are three days later. Three days, people. And we've got blooms that have opened. And a bumble, multiple bumblebees have already noticed and they're here. So this is, this is the money, people. This is what we come to see. Uh, it's so beautiful. I mean, that pink. Oh, my gosh. Um, and so what is so interesting about this flower is the flower petals, if you really get close um, and look, the flower petals uh, actually are very low. They like point downwards. And all that top stuff, milkweeds are so unique in their flowers. They have names for some of these flower parts that are just unique to milkweeds. But what happens up at the top is little uh, bumblebees or pollinators come along and their feet step into a little slit. There's multiple little slits up at the top. And their feet dip into them by accident and they struggle to get it out. And as they get their little feet out, a whole like pollen packet gets stuck on their foot. <laughs> and then they go to another flower or another plant to get uh, a nectar treat. And their foot, if it goes back into another slit on that flower, you get pollination. It's a very laborious situation. <laughs> it's quite a scene. So here we are, uh, the full sun location, the year when I had multiple stalks, but they were getting eaten by deer. Um, you can see those side shoots that came out from the central stalks. I mean, they're doing great, right? So this swamp milkweed, she's not giving up just because she got eaten by a deer early. She's going to try to still put up some blooms, right? So our partial sun spot, um, maybe a week later, stalks still looking lovely. Um, I'm showing you an old stock from the previous year, is that brown thing down by the ground. And uh, here we go up at the top. So you can see, uh, yes, nipped by a deer, but putting up the side shoots, just the same as in the full sun spot. And then here's the one that did not get nipped by a deer. And there's our blooms. So again, at that tip top, the light pink you're seeing, those actually are not petals. 
um, the petals are the darker pink that are pointing downwards, right? It's such an interesting plant. In fact, I'm going to give you a link to a video in the description uh, where somebody talks very knowledgeably about what a unique flower Asclepius incarnata has. And so here is the other one I have in this partial sunspot. And these buds haven't opened yet. And so these are like two feet away from the other ones. Why have some opened and some haven't? I would say little micro environmental conditions that I don't understand. Okay, our full sun location, the year that the nipping happened. And then do you see that at the top? Those side shoots got nipped again. That's right. Deer came back, nipped again. I was so excited to get such a big flowery show that year. Nipped. Nipped again. <laughs> oh, brutal. But this is the full sun spot. Midsummer, mid July. Look who we have. A monarch. Hi, monarch. Uh, and so that is the butterfly who will eat from many different types of plants, um, but will only lay eggs on milkweed species. And milkweed, um, swamp milkweed, this one, and also common milkweed, which is Asclepius syriaca, uh, is the preferred plants uh, that monarchs will lay their eggs on. But they will lay them on any milkweed species. But swamp milkweed and common milkweed are the two most common that she likes. Um, but it's called a larval host plant for the monarch butterfly because like I said, milkweeds are the only plant that a monarch will lay her eggs on. And then when those little eggs hatch, as you have already seen on this very plant, those little uh, monarch caterpillars come out and milkweed is the only leaves that that monarch caterpillar will eat. So that's cool. Uh, so this is that somewhere across town, and you can see also midsummer, mid July. Uh, they also some are still in buds, buds that are about to burst, and some of them are already bloomed as well. Um, and across town, they also have milkweed bugs and aphids, the same as I do. You'll see more of those bugs as we get a little bit later into the summer. Um, and so I'm just showing you right. Midsummer is about when you'll get your swamp milkweeds to to bloom. These ones here in this full sun spot in this location only got to three or four feet tall maybe just three so here we are back late July now some of the blooms are already done uh, and they're already beginning pod formation pods are how the seeds spread for swamp milkweed um, and some blooms are still there and I'm showing you here this little guy got nipped and there's a little side shoot going up um, so the plant is, of course, trying to send up as many leaves as possible. Let's get lots of photosynthesis going. Let's get lots of energy. We'll put some of that down in the roots for next year and put some of that into making, you know, pollen and nectar for this year. Lots of energy is required, right? And so here we are, late summer, August, and most of the blooms are done. Um, but you can see the beginning of pod formation. So these funny little pokey things coming up from what was the flower, these are going to be the beginnings of our pods. Tiny little pod that I'm pointing at there. So some insects um, inject their eggs into these pods, um, or into the sides of the pods, kind of. Um, but again, don't worry about it. Uh, your milkweed will do fine. And so this is the year, late summer, August. Uh, never got any blooms this year because of all the eating by the deer, but it still is a robust green plant. And she kept putting up side shoots. Um, and as you saw, monarchs will lay their eggs anyways, and monarch caterpillars will eat anyways. They don't need the flower. They recognize the leaves and they come for it anyways. So even if you don't get blooms, uh, don't worry. So here, sticking straight up, you can see the pods. Late summer, August, our full sun location. Uh, still late summer, August. Um, and this is the one uh, that got chomped on. So you won't see any pods because there were no flowers to get pollinated. And if they don't get pollinated, you don't get pods and you don't get seeds, which is sad. Um, but these leaves, again, still host the monarch caterpillars, the eggs. And there are other butterflies and moths that use monarch leaves. So it's not just, or use monarch leaves, use the swamp milkweed leaves. So it's not just monarch butterfly caterpillars 
um, that eat from milkweed. There's other things too, not to be overlooked. So early fall time now, September for me. This is our partial sun location. And you can see the central vein in the leaf is starting to change color, getting a little yellowish. Uh, so it's starting to change, even though the weather for me at this time was still warm. I'm looking here and looking for holes in the leaves, pleased that insects are having some lunch. And look at all those pods. Hello, pods. And inside, you can see a couple of those pods have burst already. The brown things in there are the seeds, and the white fluffy stuff is how they will float away on the wind uh, to go somewhere else, right? Uh, so if you want to collect the seeds, you'll pop the uh, seed pod open yourself manually, uh, and then those brown things would be the seeds that you would plant. So what I've done here is on the bottom, so on this picture, on the right and left side you can see our milkweed stalks. And in the middle is this black-eyed Susan. And look at those little white, greenish things coming off the bottom of that stem. That didn't appear until after I started planting the milkweed here. Those little things are called lacewing bug eggs. So those are the eggs of the lacewing bug, which I will show you in a minute. You've seen it before, whether you know it or not. And the lacewing bug... Uh, generally is a predator and it's a predator that likes many things including aphids so there is your lacewing bug you've seen it before right um, they are predators so I don't of course of course I don't uh, spray for aphids or anything um, and I waited and then look who came to town uh, and it took a year or two but here are the lacewing bugs you saw their eggs that I had uh, there so pleasing so um, there's a whole thing going on here. And so, the, oh, look at that. There's, there, there's our aphids. Those uh, yellowish guys are oleander aphids. And so the lacewing bugs that are going to hatch here very soon are just going to have a feast and they're going to love it. <laughs> so this one has gotten nipped in this partial sun location. So there's no pods on that one, but you can see lots of side shoots, lots of leaves. Um, and this is this early fall time. Uh, is very exciting because I see all the aphids, then I see the lacewing eggs. And this particular swamp milkweed that I'm showing you uh, flopped over and you can see that there's pods. So these pods eventually will get a little bigger and then they'll burst. But what I want you to notice as I'm showing you all this foliage, so the flowers are gone now and you're just getting these kind of cool looking pods. And do you see somebody else in there? Well, there you go. Who's that, you ask? Um, that little guy is, what do they call it? The milkweed tussock moth. So that is the milkweed tussock moth caterpillar. Awesome, right? So it's not just monarch caterpillars, but there's a few other caterpillars, including that milkweed tussock moth that can eat the leaves. Awesome. And so this, what's going on here? These yellow guys are the oleander aphids, and this little ant here is tending to them. And what researchers very nicely say is that these ants are tending and eating the aphid honeydew. Now you're like, what is honeydew? It's poop. So these ants are tending to these aphids and eating aphid poop. That's what they do. And so again, you just wait a year or two and a whole little community starts to develop. And these milkweed plants, they respond to aphids. They respond to the ants that are involved with the aphids. There's all these different symbioses going on here. Um, and it's very exciting when you start to read about all of it. And then when you actually start to see it. So here we are, early fall, uh, September, full sun location. You can see all the leaves are changing now. And again, you don't see any pods opening here because this is the one that got eaten by deer. But you can see the leaves are changing in the early fall. Um, and all these leaves, and as you have just seen, I mean, there's all these different insects and caterpillars and everything that are involved. And I am a full supporter. Oh, look, the stalks are starting to turn a brownish color now, so they're no longer just green. Um, I am a full supporter of leaving. Leave the stalks, leave the pods, leave the leaves, leave everything as it is. Because as you can see, there's a whole ecosystem of things uh, that are using our plants to overwinter, to lay eggs for caterpillars. There's so much going on. When you deadhead flowers or cut down the foliage, you're disrupting this cycle, right? 
So anyways, I'm showing you these leaves that have been chomped, which to my eyes now looks very beautiful. I'm like, oh good, oh good, activity, things are happening here. You can see the central vein in these leaves and the central stalk are changing color for the fall. And we've got our pods that are bursting. You can see the pod husks, as I'll call them, um, are turning brown also. This white fluffy stuff that helps the seeds float away, did you know that birds also use that white fluffy stuff in their nest? It's like nesting material. So, you know, other reasons to keep these things up. Um, lots of organisms and animals use all these different parts for different things. And so whether you understand all of it or not, I definitely don't understand all of it. Um, you got to know that things are being used by different organisms. And so, um, again, I mean, all of the, I mean, look at how much, act, look at how much stuff is going on here. <laughs> so the leaves are changing color. The stalks are changing color. We're getting into fall time. Um, and pods from where there were blooms, the pods are bursting. Um, but even without the flowers, without the pods, there's a lot of activity, a lot of insects, caterpillars, moths, butterflies, using all these parts. Look at the changing of those leaves. How beautiful is that? Here's the one that was flopping over. Um, and then you can see other, um, honestly, I don't know. I think those are milkweed bugs, those little red guys. But they could be aphids. I there's so many different stages of these different life cycles too um, but anyways you can see how nicely stacked up those little brown seeds are in there um, and they will slowly take off on the wind and I let them go you know I don't mind if this plant shows up in other places in the yard so early fall very late September now um, and you can see all these leaves are changing falling I mean, it's so, well, fall time is beautiful. Fall time is beautiful. Can we agree on that? <laughs> the changing colors um, is really nice. And as all these leaves fall, you know, different insects may have eggs that are on them, and the eggs sometimes overwinter, and then in the spring they hatch. And so that's why sometimes you just want to le let the leaves be. Let them fall. Leave them where they are. It's a natural mulch. Keeps the soil moist. But then it gives protection for insect eggs or just for insects looking to hide. Uh, and so I just leave it all, honestly. And it's easier if you just leave it all. Less work. <laughs> And so the stalks are changing from that nice, robust green into more of this brown as we get into fall time and winter. So mid-fall, October for me, most of the leaves have fallen now. There's still a couple green ones. A little photosynthesis still happening, but uh, mostly we've lost our leaves here. And these stalks, um, as they start to turn brown, and are no longer green, I start to call them uh, standing dead because these stalks will not get reused next year. Uh, the milkweed is done with them. So this is mid-fall. This is late October, the year, of course, that it bloomed, and you can see the old husks from the seed pods are still here. Most of the seeds are gone. I see one or two still blowing around. Um, and again, birds will use the white stuff, um, and some of these husks or whatever, they'll use that for nesting material. So I usually just let it all be. So this is that shady site. You're seeing it again. Um, and this is the stalk that is left here. And like I said, thinner stalks in this shady site, right? So that's a thin stalk. I snapped it in half because if you're like, I have to do something to take care of my milkweed in the wintertime. So this is midwinter, January for me. Uh, you don't have to do anything, but if you're obsessed with doing something, um, you can snap these stalks in half till maybe they're like a foot or two feet tall. Um, and as I'll show you, the inside of the stalks are hollow. In the springtime, uh, bees will come and make nests in there. Um, and so we like our pollinators. We're trying to support them. So you don't need to buy bee hotels uh, online or anything. The stalks from your native plants um, that are hollow actually are bees will nest in there. Uh, nature's got it all handled if we just take a step back now and then. <laughs> so I leave the stalks up. If you think the stalks are just too ugly to bear, some people will snap them, bundle them up, stand them upright like, you know, in the back of their yard or behind a tree, behind their garage, whatever. Um, and the bees can still find them to make their nests. 
Um, and other insects, even if it's not a hollow stem, uh, other insects do inject larvae, inject eggs, burrow in themselves for the winter. I mean, there's so many different insects that use these standing dead stalks. So these standing dead stalks are no longer useful to the milkweed itself, um, but it's a home protection cover nesting sites for so many other insects. You know what I mean? So here we are, that full sun spot, late winter, February. Um, and I mean, this looks over winter, they pretty much just look the same to our eyes, right? Just these standing dead stalks. And again, I leave them. Sometimes I snap them in half because I like to see the hollow on the inside. I think it's very cool. <laughs> and to make it more accessible to the bees. But um, anyway, so that's what you can do with your milkweed as it becomes fall time and winter. You can snap them in half uh, to provide nesting sites for bees. Or you can just leave them. All right, um, and as I said before, the insults that these plants get from all sorts of different uh, insects and deer even, um, there's so many different chemical and things they do on the inside to handle it. Uh, don't worry too hard about it. You don't have to keep everything away. Uh, your, your swamp milkweed will be okay. So this is late winter, February. Um, I'm kind of pulling at some of the stalks here. I don't Think, oh, somebody I know uh, knocked the stalks over. They thought they wanted that they should be down on the ground, so they're down on the ground now. And I again just leave them, so you can see some of the stalks on the ground uh, that were pushed over uh, with loving care <laughs> by somebody who meant well, which is fine. Um, insects can still use them, but that's all that you're really seeing uh, in late winter. And here we are, early spring, March partial sun location you can see the standing dead stalks they are still hollow although the hole is skinnier so different bees use different sized holes for their nests so skinny holes giant holes you can be happy with any of it because there's different bee species that use the different sized holes so there's those stalks and happily those are markers for me I will know the next year where my milkweed will be coming up thanks to those standing dead stalks so early spring, March, oh, right, where I am in early spring, it can still snow. <laughs> and you may recognize now we're at mid-spring, April, and uh, now they're coming up. So this is late April in that partial sunspot, and there they are again coming up. And now you can see that stalk coming up. That's the standing dead stalk from last year, and it's not going to be involved. And here in May, so late April, early May, is the full sun location coming up, and you can see the dead stalk there from the year before so it's a marker for where the new ones will come up there they are hello boys and um the stalk itself um just stays there as a standing dead stalk and i just man i just leave them i just leave them <laughs> um, and again in early spring when bees make nests in them uh if you decide in early spring oh let me get rid of them now because my new plants are coming up uh, you won't allow bees to make nests in there. So you do want them to stay up in early spring so bees can put their eggs in there and make little nests. So here we are back at the blooming, beautiful swamp milkweed footage. Um, and so uh, that is our swamp milkweed, Asclepius incarnata, in every season of the year. Um, and as I had said, and I just want to reiterate, if some stupid deer <laughs> comes and eats your the top of your plant uh, many times they will put up blooms anyways but in my case if you have deer come and eat the tops of your plants again <laughs> don't worry too hard I mean you miss the show of having a beautiful flower and having the different butterflies and bees come you miss that show but the leaves themselves and the stalks they're still useful they're useful to moths they're useful to the different butterflies because they lay eggs on those leaves anyways so the monarch caterpillars will still hatch and eat uh, the moth caterpillars will still hatch and eat 
Um, so there's still a lot, and the aphids will still come, and then the aphid ants, like the ants that eat the aphid poop will still come, the lacewing bugs that eat the aphids will still come. So like you still get a lot of action anyways, and you're still supporting a whole pollinator community even when you don't get flowers one year because of stupid deer. I mean, just deer. I shouldn't call them stupid. No, I should. They're stupid. But um, anyways, so always keep that in mind. You are supporting a whole little ecosystem anyways, right? So there you have it, Asclepius incarnata in every season, uh, supporting monarch butterflies, of course, and monarch caterpillars, but also that milkweed tussock moth and their caterpillars, several other butterflies, lots of pollinators. It's a busy plant that supports lots of insects, and most notably for our little human eyeballs, a beautiful, beautiful flower situation to look at. So get out there and plant some Asclepius incarnata. <laughs>